Hi, I'm Matthew Marico Zambrano, but I just go by Matt, and I play Senor Costa. Hi, my name is Katie Rodriguez, and I play Elena. Hi, my name is Jamie Ann Romero, and I'm the director of The River Bride. I'm David J. Castellano. I'm the scenic and costume designer for The River Bride. I like starting with research first, and I came across I like a lot of visual, I guess it should be the upstate I, I should I did a lot of visual research on what the, the river looked like, um, whether it was a vast open space to very small and intimate. And it actually started, it actually led to some of the design elements that we actually see on stage because there's like an image of like the, the sky setting, the sun setting, reflecting off of the water and you could just see the jungle land come across it. And we, we repeat that effect um, in the space and then just like keeping the, the wash going down the wall and out into the house, like really just bringing in the sense of water and depth and having everything elevated off the stage floor, giving it a pier kind of feel. So I mean, that's, how, that's how I originally started with it. And I loved when we had our first initial conversation, mm -hmm. you brought so many images to me right off the bat, which was delicious. <laughs> and I mean, and you had this broad range too of very realistic images mm -hmm. of the Amazon married with these like magical realism, mm -hmm. bright colors, high key images. Um, and I think you married the two beautifully. Oh, <laughs> and Jamie, I think you've done a, a really great job of keeping the river alive for us mm -hmm. as actors, mm -hmm. as always being something that is out on the horizon in a part of us, almost as if it's another character, like the seventh character of the show, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which I think is really important given how, how much of our story takes place in and around it. I think, especially for me, uh, it's the theme of, of, of a fearlessness and love and really uh, surrendering to being in love and falling in love and, and not tying yourself up in, in what could go wrong in fear and, and hopelessness, but Mm -hmm. Opening yourself up to love. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's true 100%. And also, like, <laughs> bravery yeah. and mm. forgiveness. There's often, uh, I noticed in our last run, actually, how often mm -hmm. characters in the show say, forgive me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I think, though that's not the central theme, it is interesting how much it comes up in mm -hmm. that idea of um, finding the one and going for it, mm -hmm. you know, or when you find the one, holding on to it and what's most important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in those family bonds. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And forgiveness, not just for others, but for yourself mm. as well. And I think, of course, love is a main theme of our show. And we had discussed this, that it's like romantic love, it's family love, and it's love for yourself as well, which you two are tackling beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> and I think because I, the playwright also considers this like uh, a Latinx version of a grim fairy tale. Mm -hmm. I also mm. like the darkness behind it mm -hmm. that comes in with like the, the colonialism and the effects of what we have done to indigenous culture life mm -hmm. and how it, it translates to what we hear and see now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Maricela says that it's a cautionary folk tale for mm -hmm. adults, which is mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is Absolutely. the line you say? Uh, to Steph, you never look before you leap, or you never yes. mm -hmm. something like that. You yeah. you don't look before you leap. Don't consider how your actions hurt those around you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But sometimes sometimes you have to leap and not look. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, like, I feel like my character to a fault looks too much yeah. before she leaves. Yeah, so no. yeah, <laughs> I love it because <laughs> I am not a big fan of realism. Mm. or naturalism. Mm. I get that daily. <laughs> um, I mean, and for me, what, is, what about the story? What about the space environment that's really just heightened, that's really meant to bring out what we talked about, about the themes? I, like, what are the cultural things that pop out? What are the things that are represented in the story? Like, we, talk, we don't talk about the storms and the weather that is all through like the transitions and part of the different scenes and just trying to capture that into a like a f space that we could do with lighting and like we could pretend that it's raining but what can we do to pop it out to give it that vibrance mm -hmm. is really what it is oh sure mm -hmm. yeah and i think when tackling a play that has magical realism i mm -hmm. i often tackle it the same way that i attack just mm -hmm. a regular play as well because Although we have these heightened moments of magic, I do think we experience 
bits of magical realism in our everyday lives, mm -hmm. whether it's moments of deja vu or mm -hmm. coincidences that are just magical. And um, just this past summer, I got to meet my one of my dear friends, brand new babies and this, holding this six week old baby was a, a magical moment. And it felt like time just kind of paused and it was sparkly and it was magic. And so I think there's some rooted realism mm -hmm. in that. It's in the name. <laughs> Any opportunity we have to engage the audience's imagination, mm -hmm. you know, to not spell out everything, but leave some things open to them, especially in a fantastical way. Mm -hmm. I say like, well, what do you think happened before that? Or, <laughs> uh, you imagine that storm or the thing that we're, mm -hmm. we're miming as we're pulling this in, you're, you are creating that image in your head. And when you can do that, the audience gets invested, right? Because they're mm -hmm. starting to see and, and they're engaging them in a way that they may not mm -hmm. in other place. And it, it, there's a freedom in, in things like that, that you're talking about the mime, the miming and the, it, it's this freedom to play more and it, and it really does feel like when you were a child and mm -hmm. you did play pretend and you know, you didn't have fish, so you <laughs> pretended they were there. So yeah. I do love that it always reminds me of, of getting to play when I was little. Yeah. And isn't but, that theater? So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, you know, in, inviting an audience to mm -hmm. come hear a story and I think that's why, that's what brings us back to theater over and over again is mm -hmm. that sense of being mm -hmm. a child and being read a story. I mean, that's beautifully displayed in, mm -hmm. into the woods as mm -hmm. well. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I, I also think it's the, the language. Mm -hmm. I, it, the, the lyrical nature of what you are saying that's coming off the page, like, we completely forget that you're speaking Portuguese through it because it mm -hmm. just flows so naturally that it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and if it wasn't for that lyrical flow of language, like, it, we would also be stuck in a really rooted world. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Mighty Sella's language, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's poetry. It's like Absolutely. water. <laughs> I was trying to describe the play to my aunt last night, and I was like, you know, there are parts of it that feel like a living Neruda poem. Mm -hmm. Like, there are parts oh, of it where you can just that. sink oh. into it and, yeah. like, let the words wash over you. And then other parts where it's like, all right, if we got something to say, we got to get through. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is funny, because that's one of her inspirations, mm -hmm. is, is Neruda and uh, Jose Rivera. Like, there's some great depth put into this mm -hmm. yeah. yeah she's fantastic mm -hmm. you're fantastic <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's not a musical but it, it lends itself to that form mm -hmm. um there's no well I, I take that back there are dance sequences uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in this particular piece but it, i mean it really is just the storytelling that really is vastly different compared to Shakespeare plays that I'm working on, or I really don't get the opportunity to do magical realism or Latinx playwrights. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. It's always, you know, somebody else's immersed culture and not something that I get to explore with my friends and family and talk about some of these mythos mm -hmm. that we grew up on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess just to hop on what you were saying about, you know, working on a musical mm -hmm. that in a way that it is kind of similar mm -hmm. to this play too, because we had the conversation about how in musicals, when people get so full of, mo of emotion, mm -hmm. the only thing they can do is sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it kind of feels like in our play, um, we get so full of emotion or we're overcome by the, but the magical moments are our moments to sing. Mm -hmm. And like the dance mm -hmm. moment is our moment to sing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think there's like a, a, a beautiful simplicity to the story. Mm -hmm. At its heart, it's a, it's a very easy to follow or understand story of <laughs> a dolphin who wants to be a man who comes <laughs> to this village who has to get a woman to marry him in three days. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the whole setup of the show. But what makes it wonderful is there's all this well-rounded, beautiful language. Mm -hmm. There's great uh, characters. Everyone is three-dimensional, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that to do a play with such a... a simplicity to it yet with such heart to it mm -hmm. the complexity is within the characters and their goals and the way that they go about getting what they want is pretty unique mm -hmm. i think in, in plays that i've done mm -hmm. yeah and and the more we work on it the more i find moments that i'm linking to other moments in the play and it's i mean it's just a brilliantly written play and that's always so exciting to work with a great script and a great director <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a good cast. <laughs> I mean, even just technically, it's one location. Mm -hmm. like, all modern playwrights now want to write everything in a sense. It's like a TV script 
Hmm. or a movie script. And it's like, we're going to jump from location to location to location instantaneously. Hmm. And that just, that's every producer's nightmare <laughs> and every designer's, okay, we're going to make this happen yeah. miraculously. And it's just, it's just nice to actually depend on the story mm-hmm. and the language to set the tempo and tone instead of, I want this to be on screen, but it's going to be on stage instead. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And in that that realm of um, location, we have one location for the whole show, mm-hmm. which is wonderful. And we have um, the Amazon River, and you designed the set so mm-hmm. beautifully. We have a very limited playing space. Mm-hmm. We have <laughs> just this pier that all of our scenes take place on. We have the house too, but it lends itself to this um, bit of a claustrophobic feel um, that gives us a sense of urgency and, mm. and need, which I think is beautifully reflected mm. in your set. I'd be curious, Jamie, since you were in the original production mm-hmm. um, as an actress, mm-hmm. and now you're in the role of director, what is that like switching? <laughs> like, what has your experience been acting in and not directing? You know, it's been a, a wonderful marriage of um, trying to toss everything away and also taking the things that I learned from it as well to create this beautiful story with new friends, new brains, new minds, Mm -hmm. new bodies. Um, And it's wholly new and refreshed, but also similar. Um, My background is mostly Shakespeare, and I've done many Shakespeare plays over and over (laughs) and over again. (laughs) Every single time, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Of course, the words are the same, some of the jokes are the same, um, but it's always a new ride, and this is a completely new ride, Mm -hmm. and I am immensely grateful to be on it. (laughs) I never took this as a Brazilian story. Hmm. Um, primarily because I am, I don't speak Portuguese. I am not from Brazil. Um, and I knew this mythos story. Like I knew the story 10 pages into it, um, from, uh, a Spanish speaking and people forget that the Amazon is also Bolivia, Peru, uh, Colombia, and we label it as Brazil because that's where we put the border (laughs) and not where we where the story comes from. And when we did the initial design presentation, I, I actually started off with the, the indigenous folklore that came about and then how something that happened in the 18th century is what gave us the current version of what we see on, on stage. But it was for me going through like this Brazilian and going back and talking to my family and friends, we started talking about, it's actually odd, like, cause the, the other two plays, I didn't know what part of the trilogy were actually stories that we talked about when we were talking about the river bride, mm-hmm. um, and how it encompasses not just each of the regions lore before colonialization took place, but how it kind of, changed when that happened and all three stories do that exact same thing and we end up going back and forth about well this is what we remember of this this is what we remember of this particular Mm. story so for us it was more going back to us sitting around a campfire Mm -hmm. telling stories Mm -hmm. which is how all of this started to begin with (laughs) (laughs) so and like that that's for me, that's how this started and how I started taking a look at that with my family and friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't that what theater is? Um, mm-hmm. Just yeah. telling, yeah. Mm-hmm. telling stories to yeah. one another and passing it down, passing it mm-hmm. down. Um, I, I grew up with my grandfather telling me stories of La Llorona. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and he would tell them to me in first person that when he was a kid, mm-hmm. he was getting chased by La Llorona. And I thought, I thought it was true for the longest time. (laughs) Um, And just the power those stories have over us as children. Um, And I just remember begging him to tell me another story. Um, And I think that's the beauty of theater and the Mm -hmm. beauty of this piece is it is is a folk tale. It is Mm -hmm. a a come gather around, a cautionary tale. Um, And I'm I'm really glad that we get to work on it. Mm -hmm. For me and my connection just right off the bat is family always, Um, especially, you know, I'm Cuban and and I grew up in a very predominantly Cuban community. And it's just this idea of, (laughs) for lack of a better way of putting it, just like word vomiting love on your (laughs) family constantly. 
And I was so shocked, like when I went to college and I realized, oh, that's not how everyone is. And I and I realized that's a blanket statement. And there are families that aren't like that in my community, but at least for me and my close friends, it was always. And I feel like this family is so open with their mo. Well, not all of them, not all the time, but especially watching you and Gabriela, it's you guys are so loving and and so loving to us as well as your kids. And to just see that that's. That's my initial um, connection mm -hmm. with being Latina, yeah. Yeah, mine would be the same, actually, as a cultural touchstone would be the family. Mm. Um, and that idea mm. of, it made me laugh out loud when I first read the script and within two minutes of Moises being in the house, we're like, stay with us as long <laughs> as you want. Come to the wedding, you're the guest of honor. Uh -huh. And just that idea of like, my, you know, my family was very much mm -hmm. like that. Like your, mm -hmm. your aunties are gonna throw this party for you. You mm -hmm. need a new dress, great. We'll get her on it. We'll get her on it. Right. Just that, like, yeah. whatever needs to happen, we'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> exactly. Because the community is there for right. you, and that fam the family is the community. Mm -hmm. And especially like you were saying, Jamie, that we're in such tight quarters and such claustrophobic. We all live in one room <laughs> yeah. that you know you can't really escape that family. You have no choice but to embrace it. And mm -hmm. um, the oncoming of Moises really throws things into chaos in that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, that the, the family connection I think was the strongest mm -hmm. in that way. You know, people forget home is where the heart is. And, mm. You know, your first line of defense is always your family. Mm. And I think right now that idea of what a sense of family is is kind of lost. Mm. Um, so hopefully to see a, a family dynamic where they are closed in and stuck in and around each other that even some way, somehow they learn how to deal and adapt and grow with each other um will expand out to our audience so that they too like you got to remember where that you start from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because i think that makes you a better human being knowing whatever your family has given you down the line there's a line that two characters say which is take a leap of faith mm -hmm. he asked me to take a leap of faith mm -hmm. and i think sometimes it's it's hard for myself i can only speak for myself to be brave and bold mm -hmm. in a lot of different facets and in, in ways in, in art, make, in making art, mm -hmm. in going for the things that you want in relationships mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Um, the things that matter the most that we hold inside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to take that leap of faith because you don't know what's going to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important that you do because mm -hmm. otherwise you may spend your life in regret, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little Katie personal. <laughs> No, but I, I absolutely. And I think another part of that is is remembering that it's it's so important for you to be happy because mm -hmm. I think Elena, it's it's constantly like she's such a, a people pleaser and um, <laughs> I can't relate, um, but she is such a people pleaser that I think she truly loses herself in that and throughout this play little by little you know she's reclaiming herself and going after what what she wants and what mm -hmm. what's going to make her happy mm -hmm. i think representation matters mm -hmm. um, so very much and we want our stages to reflect what we see out in the world and um to draw on another fish out of water fairy tale mm -hmm. um just the release of the new little mermaid trailer i've seen all these reaction videos of these young girls mm -hmm. watching this mermaid that looks like them and how wonderful that is and how important it is to see yourself mm -hmm. in the art you consume. Um, and I think that's so, so very important. Yeah. I think specifically for the Arvada Center, a place that is known for uh, providing a diverse mm -hmm. array of artistic offerings. You mm -hmm. can take pottery classes, dance mm -hmm. classes, uh, orchestra classes, mm -hmm. theater classes. Mm -hmm. You can see a gallery for free, you mm -hmm. know? It's important to also show a diverse array of perspectives on stage, both for the audience, but also for the organization itself, mm -hmm. and to put forth those different voices. If, if the Arvada Center really wants to be the leading cultural institution that I think it can be and mm -hmm. will be someday, uh, <laughs> it needs to do that. It needs to provide diverse uh, perspectives in its plays and in its artistic style. I mean, I think up and down the front range, it primarily forgets that the largest population in the state is Hispanic. <laughs> or Latinx. And I know everybody wants to see musicals because everybody likes to be entertained with happy and joy and dance numbers and musical pieces. But the idea that you actually kind of alienate a large part of your population 
just because you're just not stopping to think about, oh, why aren't we exploring more of these playwrights who cover issues that are relevant to the people who live around you? Mm. And also, I think it's important. Mm. It's so easy to other people and, mm. and, and sort of mm. live in your bubble and, and to see other cultures and other people on mm. stage and realize, wait a minute, I think the same things. I do the same things. I have the same struggles, the same issues. I think that it, it breaks down those walls of trying to other people and it, and it, it just further proves that we're all humans trying to live this one beautiful, mm -hmm. crazy life we've been given. I mean, out of all of the plays that I remember seeing in like the Denver Center or the Arvada Center, the, the plays that come out the most to me was Black Elk Speaks mm -hmm. or they, the, they changed Romeo and Julieta. Um, weren't things were things that identified to me and my family when we went to go and see theater. Oh my gosh! The first time I saw In the Heights, I mean, <laughs> not, I know it's a musical. No, but no, no, no. I mean, I grew up, you know, with West Side Story, and of mm -hmm. course, our Queen Rita Moreno. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember sitting in the audience, and Nina's talking about like, well, what if my family had never left Puerto Rico? And I was just like, I think that about my, fa and it was yeah. just like this earth shattering mm -hmm. moment of. Oh my God, like, mm -hmm. this is me, I'm being seen, this is, and I don't, I don't think I had realized that before, that I hadn't, you know, mm -hmm. I'd always heard, I grew up in Miami, so we were the predominant mm -hmm. <laughs> group of people oh. there, and so, but I didn't realize that all of the TV and the theater and, and, and everything I was consuming, I, I wasn't, I wasn't really seeing mm -hmm. me and my, oh my gosh, I mean, I took my parents to see it, <laughs> my dad my dad audibly sobbed <laughs> during a new deal. And like, I mean, I, the whole thing was just so earth shattering for me as an artist and as a human mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't until I saw works from Jose Rivera mm -hmm. um, that I just got to really get into it. And I was like, there is a, a one act Spanish play and it, it was called The Vendor. And I, I'm, it's, it's a, a Spanish translation of it, but I, I can't think of what that actual translation is. And it's, you know, it takes place during Reagan as governor and they're trying to find the correct white Hispanic to be seen next to him as he's running. So you have this stereotype of different types of Hispanic cultures in this shopping and they're going through and trying to find the right one to represent <laughs> Everybody. Mm. Los Vendidos. Los Vendidos, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Did I do forensics in high school, actually? Mm -hmm. That's what, oh. um, I, you know, also, like, as an actor, it wasn't until about six years ago that I actually had the opportunity to be in a show where the cast was predominantly majority Latinx or members of the global majority. Mm -hmm. And as an actor, that was a great gift. Mm -hmm. And to be able to be a part of a company where I could feel like I could bring my authentic self mm -hmm. uh, when for so long the opposite was true. Not that I wouldn't mm -hmm. bring myself to any role, but you know, there is something about being around people of a like-minded background and, mm -hmm. and history that uh, I think allows us to to help tell that story, to help to boost that story mm -hmm. in a way that is authentic mm -hmm. um, and important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.